Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting video. This is the 1000 video on my channel and I thought we could do something special because I was thinking about this for a long time. I cannot read for 1000 days or 1000 hours. <laughs> so I was considering 1000 pages, like how a little vlog for 1000 pages. But then I was like, but what if I read 1000 pages every day for a week? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. It is Monday today, so we're going to be reading 1,000 pages every day until Sunday. That is 7,000 pages. I am nervous and a bit excited. Obviously, I have before read like several books in a day when there's been real puns, etc. But not like in the goal of pages. That's always been in the goals of books. So obviously that's often been shorter books. And I do think it's going to be more of a challenge than I do think in my head it will be. Because I was like, it will be fine. And I'm sitting here like, what was I thinking? But it's going to be very fun. I'm going to suffer and it's going to be very fun. And I thought it would be fun to do something extra special for my 1000 video. I've been here way too long. So thank you everyone for all your support over the years. And we are going to read loads in this video. I was like calculating if I read like, books around 300 pages it will be 21 books in a week it's not gonna be that but that would have been insane <laughs> just saying and i have different like plans for every day for reasons there's also might be a readathon this weekend so then like the setup might change a bit in a way but i will still read my pages that's the most important thing so rules is that i can roll over pages to the next day so like let's say i use a day to read 800 pages i can read 1200 pages or and if i'm behind for like the whole week let's say on saturday i only read 5000 pages i am allowed to use the sunday to read the last 2000 pages it's not like really strict this is for fun so long as i manage to read the 7000 pages within this week I have passed. Will I read more than 7,000 pages? That might happen depending a lot on how this week goes. The only reason I could do this at all is because I only have one work day this week. That never happens. But it happened this week, so that is tomorrow. And then I shall allow myself to read an omnibus manga to manage my pages. And um, obviously I am allowed to read whatever I want, like manga, etc. There will be manga in this video. And that will, of course, ease the load of these books. So I count everything. Not all your books, but I count everything you read that's pages so obviously if i'm super behind on sunday manga might save my ass but we're just going to follow my normal rules for now for my reading and i'm not going to read a manga yet so what am i reading today that is the question because obviously i can read many different things and it's already like what time is it it's already like 11 and i feel already stressed i feel like i should start to read at 10 so like i don't need to sit and read it so late but I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm starting the vlog of reading this, which is A Song of Swords by George R. Martin. This is the third book in A Song of Ice and Fire. I put it on my TBR for... It gets really dark when I woke up. What month are we in? March. And I still haven't gotten to it yet. I would have had to read it this week anyway, because all this on my TBR and this is the last week of March. But I usually would have probably read this over like four days and I'm gonna read most of it today. Actually, it's over 1,000 pages. It is like, well, obviously we're not gonna count the compendium in the end, which is like 100 pages long, but it's actually 1,123 pages. So obviously today, usually I would just finish the whole thing. I was gonna read that much as I am, but we are following the rules <laughs> of this video. So we're gonna read the what, page 1,000 or maybe 1,006, because that's where the chapter ends i could also just stop mid page that could also work which is just a few pages before so i'm going to read all of this and then this will be left for tomorrow great <laughs> but i have actually read this before it is a reread but i never read it in english i read it in norwegian many years ago and i am like currently rereading through all of them i was watching the show very intensely and i stopped because i was closing in on the red reading which i now need to experience here so then i can maybe start watching the show again not this week though no time no time do i need to tell you what a song of ice and fire is about because like you know you know you know i am like excited because like i do love this story and these characters even though obviously the ending blah 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 we don't need to talk about it but actually like it was funny i showed you in my book because i am gonna read it on my kindle because i'm not gonna hold that and i checked it out from the library to read on my Kindle. 
obviously it's the same book, but like I'm counting the pages in this one because I do feel like Kindle pages lie. And I like like the visual kind of pages here. So I need to kind of keep up of where 1000 pages was because it's probably not going to be the same. I need to remember the sentence. Little monster is in a black cell and soon Sir Ellen will have his head off. I need to remember that sentence. That's the first, like the last part of the sentence on the top of page 1000. Will I remember? Yes, for sure. For sure, guys. Okay, so I have like this estimate in my head of how this will go. Game of Thrones does take me longer time to read than normally. So I think I will be stuck here for a really, really long time. I do time while I'm reading, so I could tell you later how much time I actually took. I will obviously just read throughout the day. I'm not going to film myself throughout the whole day. I will give you updates if I remember, because I feel like it's going to be a lot of updates in general in here. I think I estimated that I would have to read, depending on a book, from five to eight hours every day, but I do feel like it's going to go up to ten, depending on a book. So... That's not that many hours out of the day, actually, if you think about it. Depends how much I, like, put down my book and stare into the void. But let's start this, guys. Let's start. I hope you're excited to see me go into insanity. Right now, I'm feeling very motivated. I'm very, like, <laughs> it's gonna be fine. But we'll see how I feel, like, on Wednesday, Thursday. Then I might have lost it. So, yeah. See you then. <laughs> not on Wednesday, Thursday. See you soon. Oh, my God. Okay. Hello. It's been many hours. I didn't start, like, I once. Like, I woke 10 today. And I didn't manage to start reading until like after two <laughs> because I had to go and chop food and life. I am, according to Kindle, 39% into the book. I think the Kindle actually has a bit less pages than like my physical, but I want to see where I am like in the book book, which is here. I wanted to get much further than I am. So not stressed at all. Not stressed at all. Let's see. Okay, I found where I am at. I'm actually on page 461 because I found a chapter I'm at in the physical. So I'm about soon halfway in 40 pages. I wanted to up to halfway, but I'm like, this was the perfect time to take a break. So that's why it ended up like this. I have been reading for, let's look at my hours app, three hours and two minutes. Not my best, but not my worst either. Obviously, like, it takes me longer to read. It is more a dense book, even though I read it before, and even though I know this story really well, because I watched the TV show, like, a hundred times. But still, like, obviously, I want to absorb the details and be in the story, etc. Not that I don't usually, but obviously, some books are easier to read, and I'm having a great time. I'm getting a lot of nostalgia of when I I'm in a world of song that's ice and fire lately, like when I've been watching the show and reading the first two books in January and February. My heart when I'm in this world. Obviously very enjoyable, even though like not at this point I do know like obviously the main plot points really well. So like I'm not surprised by the things happening, but I'm having a very good time. So if I read for three more hours, I should soon be done. Then I read, let's say about 450 more pages, then I am soon done because then I should be on a thousand but usually when I read a lot in the same book I do start to read faster but I also sometimes start to read slower it depends a lot so chances are in about three hours I will be done and now it is six so then I will be done around nine which is not a terrible time because I'll still have some time to play Double Daylight which I've been addicted to this last week afterwards so actually it's not even bedtime that by the time I'm done actually not bad at all but yeah, I'm having a good time. Gonna let you know how it goes soon. Oh my god. <laughs> it is now 22.22. Exactly, that was random. And I just reached 1,000 pages in A Storm of Swords, which is actually also in the Kindle at page 1,000 as well. So they matched up. I was like checking when I was reading in the end there to like see that I was actually on page 1000. It took me so long. I read for read time was six hours and 34 minutes, which I feel like is a really, really long time to read in a day. Obviously I had some breaks here and there, pee breaks and eating breaks, etc. So obviously I started, what? I was around round two and I was like 23, 30 almost but yeah it says that i tomorrow will finish the book in 48 minutes Whew! because obviously i'm like at 89 percent it's not that many pages left it is how many pages was it again 1123 pages so i have 123 pages left in this which will be read tomorrow oh my god i did it I just had to read for six hours, but I did it. And this is only the first day. I am obviously very much liking it. I had totally forgotten how much happens in book three because book two, not 
that much happened, I feel like. It was a lot of like establishing things. And obviously I watched this show very recently. I stopped mid season three because I thought book three covered season three. But there's so much in here from some certain point of views that are season four stuff. Like pretty late season four stuff as well. And I kind of forgotten that because apparently I checked the last time I read this was in 2014, which is 10 years ago. And that is a long time. It's a very long time. I was like, I was 16, maybe 17 actually, when I read it for the first time. I can't even remember being 17 ever. Either way, um, just how some point of views are exact with season three and then some are very much stretched into season four is very interesting because obviously if you're going to read them with the seasons, you think that they're going to match, but I don't. This is where the discrepancies happen a lot. And I had totally forgotten that and obviously it doesn't really matter. But in my head, I was not prepared after the Red Wedding to be so many things because season three, you know, like ends right after the Red Wedding. And I was like, oh, but obviously it is to like give each event their proper time as they did in the beginning. And now I can watch a lot of season four as well, at least for a lot of the point of views. A lot of sad events happened. A lot of characters died, like three characters that I really enjoyed that I can think of on the top of my head. A lot of other like storylines start here as well and like are developed and go with different paths than they do in the series, which I always forget kind of, because this is where like a lot of like small changes happen that never happened in the show in a way but yeah obviously love it a lot <laughs> it's one of my favorite series and favorite things even though yes and it will never come and we are all upset about it honestly so i just thought i would quickly tell you about my plans tomorrow morning instead of just starting a clip tomorrow morning and be like i'm gonna read this i can might as well tell you now so I am working tomorrow. I have a six hour shift instead of a four hour one. That is two hours lost of reading. And I am going to read Full Metal Alchemist 4, 5, and 6, which is Omnibus Volume 2, which I think I always follow like the pages as it says on Goodreads, but it's around 576 pages. So this will be most of my pages tomorrow and then plus rest of Game of Thrones. And then I think, because my math is not madding in my head right now, because I think I need to start something else, but I probably won't be able to finish anything else than these. But yeah, this is the omnibus that is next on my list. Um, I'm very excited because I just started for Metal Alchemist two days ago. And it follows these two brothers that one of them doesn't have his body anymore. The other one has lost his arm and his foot and they're trying to restore the bodies. At least the one that doesn't have a body that's just in this like metal armor. And they do like trying to, I was going to say, investigate different alchemy, etc. in this world to find out the way to make this happen because this happened through alchemy as well. And then they go out on these different cases. I am filming on the best videos on these, like vlogs. I don't know if I will post the first one when you're watching this, because I think you're gonna watch this before, because this needs to be my thousand video, but they are coming and I very much enjoyed the first one that I read two days ago. So yeah, this is my read for tomorrow, mostly because I'm working, because I also don't know if I will be able to reach 1000 pages, but I will try to read that before work and then some game of at work and then um, something else when I come home or something. And then the rest of the week will totally be chill. I actually have lots of stuff I need to read for certain things. So this is kind of the perfect week where I just catch up on everything that I've been mean, behind on all month because I read all the stuff instead of things I needed to read, which, you know, tends to happen. But yeah, okay. I feel very achieved right now, feeling very good. I feel like it took so long because it's like, I feel like I just need to go to bed soon, but I don't need to wake up early. So like, I can chill. And I hope you're having a good time. See you tomorrow. <laughs> hello, hello. It is now 11.53 the next morning and I just finished Full Metal Alchemist Volume 2 Omnibus and Volume 4, 5, 6 of like the, I was going to say, the single volumes to read my pages. I need to go and eat. I haven't eaten yet. I am sorry. <laughs> but I've now read 576 pages for today, which I feel really great about because obviously I'm going to work in like one and a half hour which I'm not excited about, but we don't need to talk about that. And then obviously I have 123 pages left of Game of Thrones, which I obviously I'm not going to use one and a half hour to eat. I might read some like before leaving, but I'm not going to finish it before leaving, which means that I will be up at 699 pages after finishing Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't know why I'm calling it Game of Thrones. A Storm of Swords, A Clash of Kings. A Storm of Swords. A Clash of Kings is the second book, which means I need to read 301 more pages after that again. I think I kind of have decided what to read, but I might show you later, depending like of how much I read before I leave and if I have time to update you before I leave. So far, loving this, by the way. I realized I just put it down and didn't talk about it properly, but obviously I can like spoil it, but like we got some backstory here that we already knew about, we got to see it. 
and I just love like the how they're going around to solve stuff in a way and just how like down to earth it is right now it's not like big epic fights all the time it's just like very much like unraveling like these characters getting to know them developing them and then some at the same time like solving like kind of a mystery and it's very heartfelt it's a lot of like following family and it's really sad but at the same time also very hopeful so i'm having just such a good time i can't believe i feel so attached and i only read six volumes so i'm very excited to continue but also simultaneously very nervous because i do think it's going to be heartbreaking in the future i don't know like obviously the world we're building is like expanding more and more but i don't know if the author has decided on a happy or sad ending but I feel like it's going to be melancholy, and I don't think I'm ready for that. And obviously, it's not a long series, and only 27 volumes. So the fact that I read six of them, is only like 21 left, which is like a less than of all I read of One Piece, which is not close to finish. So like, obviously, it's a compacted story compared to some other series, which means like, I feel like everything is so impactful right now in a different way. And... I'm really enjoying myself and I can't wait to continue. Good, good, good pick for this. Because I read this faster in one piece, etc. anyway. So yeah, I'm glad I am on 576 right now. And then I will let you know how the reading goes throughout today. I feel like today is less stressful just because I read this than yesterday. And I'm only on day two. So good luck to me. <laughs> okay, it's like 400 billion hours later. I'm home from work. I did just finish. Uh, 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 if I can grab the book behind me. A Storm of Sports. It was amazing, great, outstanding. I had totally forgotten how many things that actually happens in this one because in my head I split the books in seasons. Not like that at all. But yeah, how about five stars? So many amounts in this one makes me really consider how nothing happened in book two but still love book two. <laughs> but yeah, I know the fourth book a lot of point of views are cut out so it's like the worst one <laughs> and also it's really weird how like events that in show feels so long is it like a whole episode here is like one chapter for like 10 pages super weird but yeah so this was as we know 123 pages left of it plus the 576 in for Metal Alchemist I'm now on 699 pages if I don't my math correctly which means I do need to read 301 more it's soon 10 p.m I might go off after midnight which like it doesn't matter for me because like I'll still be awake and like as long as I read my pages but I chose now my next read which is as you can see or maybe not see that well is Lark and Kasim Start a Revolution by Case and Calendar. This I have picked out because obviously I love Case and Calendar's books. It is by a black author which is a tumbling panda I have not completed yet this month which is actually a tragedy if you think about how many books I read and I haven't read one by a black author yet. I don't really think, I don't actually know. I don't think so. That is disgusting. But also I need to complete the best war challenge, which is for March to read a book where the character name is in the title. And um, here we have Lark and Castle in the title. So I'm counting this one. I was planning to do the challenge and the black author prompt for two different books. And then I realized I could just put them together so I can complete two prompts in one. So I can read all the stuff for this vlog. That can be maybe more random we shall see how it goes so this is what i'm gonna read this is a bit awkward again i feel like this is a bit stupid because it is 326 pages i don't know why it's always like around 20 something which means i'm gonna read 301 pages which means there will be 25 pages left without for tomorrow for me again it was like 123 left of so much words which is I, I just think that's funny it's a bit stupid because normally obviously i would have finished those 25 pages but we are just going to do it like that so i need to read 301 and arc and chasm i do think that it could take me like an hour or a half but i am also gaming a bit and i'm reading when i'm dead because that's what i feel like doing so i'll probably go a bit late today but it's fine i will give you an update before i go to sleep of how i want obviously if i'm behind i will catch up tomorrow etc but no work for the rest of the week so i do believe that everything will be okay and i don't know what the book is about because i haven't i, I don't read synopsis i read it on the author name so i'll let you know what it's about a bit later hello so we are now at 1 30 a.m i spent a long time reading because i was gaming in meanwhile and i did manage to get to page 301 in Kasim and Lark. Time I spent reading today was four hours two minutes. And yesterday it was like six hours or something. I don't remember exactly. Big difference. Big difference. I did audiobook some when I was like 
commuting as well but those pages are not counted in here unrelated to this video oh my god this book always i have like 25 pages left um but it follows lark winters who is non-binary and they have twitter accounts where they write about like love and different things in the world but also things that are like unfair in the world like racism and being non-binary and queer and black and then this thread goes viral where they confess their love but it wasn't they who wrote the thread it was their best friend and then they take the credit for this thread and like this whole like thing starts where they have to confess that they were in love with someone else etc so that is like the plot of the story but the story is much more about like conversations and discussions about like cancel culture and racism being queer being black being trans living in this world our main character is very much like unsure about themselves like they want to love everyone but they cannot love themselves and then they're trying also to be like a inspiring author or like not trying to be they are an author but trying to publish a book and keeps getting rejected which also obviously affects them mentally like it would do to anyone with the whole like try going viral they have a lot of pressure from being online and you know like living chronically online like young people do so there's a lot of smart conversation in, in this it's a lot of conversations that makes me very frustrated and angry which is what you're supposed to feel it's a lot of conversations i had with my friends as well important conversations it can feel a bit like intense in it as well because i don't think naturally conversations flow like this all the time there's a lot of like relationship between uh, everyone like there's some who are not really nice to our main character and then like we have difficult relationships and friendship with our main character and also mistakes are being made and it's like you know owning up to mistakes and like the forgiveness of that and people only forgiveness you know with like cancel culture etc so i think like the book feels i i don't know really how to describe it but a bit dreamy in a way we have all these conversations and everyone is participating and it's very important i think it's very well written i think it's very important good but i also do feel like some of the points that are being made it can be a bit too on the nose because it's very doesn't let itself be subtle but it's giving a message but it's talking about like very important topics and it doesn't drum it into you but i do also feel like it can be very like on the nose of what it wants to say in a way it does want to give a message i felt like i said it in a bad way parts of it really makes my heart hurt they are going through so many things our main character and like the different people in the book and also there's poly love to see that love to see it there's toxicity there's bullying there's so many parts of this story and i feel it's a bit funny in a way that our main character is trying to sign in this book about a black non-binary queer teen and the feedback for that book is like there's too many non-binary people in the book their main character doesn't feel black and the book that they are trying to send in is a book about someone called birdie who gets wings and then they go back in time or something and birdie is kind of present in our main character's mind in the book so i feel like the book that they are submitting is the book we are reading now kind of i know it's not but that's how it feels like and it also brings up a lot how like we think that teenagers are stupid, but they're really not. I kind of think that teenagers are stupid as well. <laughs> but on different things than what this brings up. But yeah, it's just bringing up a lot of things. I think it's a really well-written book. It's making me very, like, hopeful and feeling the love and, like, feeling validated. But at the same time, it makes me very depressed that we live in this world. So I, I feel like it's doing both. I'm also feeling shit tomorrow, 25 pages, woohoo. And I need to figure out what to read next. I honestly don't know. Like I have a long to be off books, obviously I want to do for this vlog. But I'm like, now, now I have no idea which one to pick first. So we shall see tomorrow. I'm going to bed now. See you then. Hello, it is the next morning. I just finished Lark and Chasm. Yesterday I did talk about the main characters being a queer and trans and black but i don't think i said they were also neurodivergent like there's several characters here being neurodivergent and non-binary and trans and queer so i just thought that i would mention it because i don't think i said that yesterday i don't know why so i just thought i would add it but i read the last 25 pages they were really good actually my aunt is calling me so give me a moment i didn't even make the phone even when running but i called her back up either way 
It was a really great book, actually. I always think that Case and Calendar writes really well with very different, important topics. Obviously, I liked some more than others, but this was really good. Felix Ever After is still my favorite, or one of my favorite books of all time. So, very much recommend that. But also, would very much recommend this. It's a very solid book with many important things. Um, I think it was written really well. So, really strong four stars to this. So, now I need to decide on my next read. And I am trying to read first things that are required reading before moving on to other stuff. In March, I forgot to pull my um, gum machine pick for my reading machines in the High Serum and Paper Trion. That was a sentence. So I thought I would do that now. But the problem is that I have two of the books I know is in there, but not one of them. So if it is the one I don't have and it's not available digital on my library, I need to read it next month. The good machine is here. So let's pick it out. I forgot to do it in my TBR. I'm really sorry, but I ruined the gun machine. So it's not, it's not happy with me. I think I just need to kind of pull it out. And because like a piece is missing and all the notes are stuck in each other. And I, I just need a note. Oh, if I do this, eh, this is not going well. Also, I need, I need balls for the gun machine. I don't know how to get balls. Like, they are literally stuck. Do I need to use the scissors? Just give me one note. Give me one. Okay, I think I got one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop it in pieces. Oh no, I lost the one I had. It disappeared. Well, I guess I would take another one. Oh god, the, the lid went off. Oh my god, everything is falling apart. I don't think Gun Machine likes me anymore, to be honest, after I ruined it. Um, can you just... Oh! I just ruined Gun Machine even more. Like, the piece... I would... I'm sorry. Oh! I fixed it! I know I can just take a note from the top, but I just, I want it the proper way. Oh no, I'm cutting the paper. Okay, 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 I got one. I got one. That was such a struggle. Oh, so I got Fiji, whose book is the one I don't have, which is like, Lissy something. <laughs> that was really helpful. The Hundred Lies of Lissy Lovett. So I'm going to see the digital libraries I have. I have several. It is available at the library. I'm borrowing it now. Sending it to my Kindle. This is great. I didn't know it was there. I'm really happy. Because or else, oh, well, I couldn't read it now anyway. And I, I'm trying to get better than you know, not buying everything. And I turn on my Kindle. Don't know anything about it. I do believe it is a Y contemporary. I don't know, even know how many pages it is. Yeah, I'm gonna check. It's just loading for a very long time. I forgot to press get library book, so that's why I didn't go in. Come on, come on. I believe that you will show up here eventually. Oh, okay. I finally came in. It's all loading. <laughs> the first sentence in this book is literally, the first thing that happened was Lizzie Lovett disappeared and everyone was all, how c can someone like Lizzie be missing? It seems to be maybe a mystery kind of. In Kindle Pages, this book is 384 pages. Very typical why <laughs> a book count. So yeah, I don't know how many pages we are now. I can check that too. I made a spreadsheet for myself, so I don't need to math every time <laughs> we are here. So we would then be on 409 pages. There's a lot of pages left after that. But I'm gonna go and read it now and I will let you know how it goes. See you soon. A hundred years later, I'm done with this little hut. I feel like it looks like I've taken a nap. I've been squishing this chair for hours. Okay, it took me like two hours and 17 minutes, but still. And I have so many conflicted feelings. I honestly don't know if I like this book. Granted, I read the last page like 17 seconds ago. So like, how to scramble my thoughts. On the lives of Lisa Lovett follows this girl called Hawthorne, who used to go to school with her, like Lisa Lovett was older than her and has graduated, and then she goes missing. And our main character, Hawthorne, becomes kind of, I would almost say, obsessed with her and like her life, because she always saw her as like this popular, super perfect girl. And then it's like, how can she go missing? And the more she finds out about her life, like Lisa's life after high school, the more she's very shocked because she lived a very like, she walked to the diner, 
she had a shitty apartment, she didn't like have this grand life that she had been maddening for her, and she gets convinced that Lizzie turned into a werewolf, which is quite bizarre, and then she also starts becoming friends with Lizzie's boyfriend that Lizzie had when she was missing, who is much older than her and makes me quite uncomfortable. He is 25 and Hawthorne is 17 and they hang out a lot and maybe things develop more than that and I was like, look, I was 25 last year and I would not have hung out with a 17 year old, just saying. But either way, and a main character is very, I would say, bashful. She, she doesn't have a lot of like, eh, empathy and like, she doesn't care about things around her she doesn't care about emotions around her well at the same time she's having a really hard time as well like she doesn't have a lot of friends her best friend and her has like a, a good friendship but she can be quite self-obsessed self-absorbed that makes her not realize that she's hurting her friend but also people are really mean to her as well so i do get that, that as well she becomes very obsessed with Lisa's life and i kind of I was gonna say worships it in a way when she actually like had one conversation with her her whole life. And I I struggle a lot with our main character because she is very difficult to follow. But at the same time, I do also empath empathize with her. She wants to have a normal teenage experience. And then people around her are like, why? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, what is a normal teenage experience? And she's trying to learn this, trying to learn that maybe she doesn't need to be like everyone else and she's clearly like not but what is like everyone else because a lot of the book is to trying to tell you that you think everyone is like everyone else but no one actually is everyone is just faking it and a main character can't fake fake it so that's why like she's different but in a way if you think about it everyone is different and everyone it seems like they fit in but everyone feels like they don't fit in and I do get like that message and not that like, it was told like that directly but I do get it but I was just struggling with our main character I felt like she was very she didn't have a lot of self-insight and then I'm also trying to reflect upon the fact that she's 17 so I do get that I, I don't want to say that teens are stupid but it takes time at least when you're a teenager to realize to reflect upon yourself when I think about myself as a 17 year old, I probably didn't, was probably very self-absorbed and didn't realize the stuff I was saying and doing was maybe not things you should do. So I get it, but it still can be frustrating to read about. And it was like one thing she did where one of her classmates had this relationship with a, well, I think he was a teacher, which is always not a good thing. But then she just like jumped to a conclusion that he was a terrorist because he wasn't white. And I like, called her mom and then she was like, well, I probably knew he, he wasn't a terrorist, but that was the first thing that jumped into my mind. I want to make it interesting. And I was like, well, that's kind of racist. And um, yeah, so like stuff like that, it never really takes proper accountability for. Even though, yes, she's a teenager and I do get that like, they think differently on consequences than adults do maybe. Or the different consequences for them. But that was stuff like that she'd never reflected upon. And I do, as, as I said, I get that why she didn't reflect upon it. But for me, I was like, I I am all for character growth. But I feel like the character growth wasn't there. She did learn stuff about herself and realize she appreciated her friendship more. But in the end, she was the way she absorbed herself into this girl's life that she barely knew. I feel like she needs to talk to someone because like for me I don't think that is good but I also feel like it's rude to tell someone just because they think that way to be like you should talk to someone but honestly I don't think it was healthy for her and the people around her and it was a whole thing. So yeah it was very complicated it was much more complex I guess when you think about like the bigger picture like being a teenager being self-absorbed being in a relationship with this old dude that never really also was not brought up properly. And then it seems like she's starting to maybe get a thing with another person who was also much older than her but not as older than her. And I'm like, uh, what's with this thing? But yeah, so at the beginning, I actually really disliked the book because I mean, character was just a lot, but you do get used to her voice. 
And I'm not saying that the book is bad just because the main character is different and like doesn't think the way that I do and does questionable things because again, she's a teenager. But it also made it a struggle to get through. And this whole mystery of like what happens to Lizzie obviously is the overbearing thing of the story. But just the way, <laughs> I don't know, I guess the way a main character uses another girl's disappearance, not for necessarily her own gain, but her own justification for her actions is weird to me and I don't think she properly understood that even though she does realize some of the stuff she did and I just like in the end I'm sitting with like what what was what was the book in a way like is it you don't need to fit in <laughs> is it I I don't know I honestly don't know it was very like I don't know. It was written in 2017. And I feel like I can definitely tell from the time of contemporary in that time. Uh, like the John Green era, definitely. Not necessarily, you know, bad. It's just... I don't know if I liked it. I was invested in the story. Like, the characters I really, like, did not like in the beginning. I ended up liking in a way. The way I char my character think, you get used to. So I do think that... In the way it was written, it was well done. It managed to flesh out the personalities a lot. But personally, if I like the book, I'm not sure. I feel like I would give it like a lower three for now. And I don't know if I would recommend it. Because honestly, I would recommend someone an another book. Because it was weird. I do feel parts of it is really good. It's just the overall like how there weren't consequences or like reflections enough for me. To just sit here and be like, you know. Either way, this clip is way too long and this vlog is gonna be ages long, but it's okay. So that's what I'm left with. Nothing. <laughs> I guess I just, I will start my next book. It wasn't terrible, just, I don't know, I guess it makes me think it can have that. So my next book, I need to look at my required reading for a moment. So I'm thinking I'm going to read The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the first book in the Seven Realms series. It's a book that I wanted to read for ages. I had this book, like the first book on my TBR for years, and I still have not read it. The reason I'm reading it now is because I want to finish the Our Fantasy Bingo, which is for Reddit. I have four books left for that I need to read, and the, like the next one starts the first of April, so I should read them all now. And like I have completed almost all the prompts except four, so I want to do it, and I will make a video of all the books I read for it because I want to just fill it in as the year went by, and then I did like a what's it called like a um I went through to see what I actually had completed or not a month ago or something, and there was like some that I hadn't. So this would complete I think a fantasy that is published before. 2009. I just not on the top fantasy list of Reddit and I think I checked that this was not there. Or else this would be really awkward. Yeah, it needs to be published between 2000 and 2009 and not in the top of fantasy. So this is published in 2010. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. I think maybe just the UK edition was published in 2010. This will be so awkward. Then I need to find something else. Please, how do I check? Yes, first published 6th of October 2009. The UK edition came in 2010. So obviously, I'm still counting it. Actually, it's on Kindle Unlimited. And I like to lie down properly and not hold the book open. So I'm going to read it on my Kindle. I already have it here. It is 506 pages long, which will give me 915 pages. So I will still need to read 85 pages after finishing it. I don't know, I thought a 500 page book would get me over, but yeah, nah. Either way, I don't actually know the plot, even though I owned the book for years. I know it's the first one in, in like several books series. I do have... Ooh, I was gonna read the whole series for like a vlog, and then I never did, because that vlog series died in my head. But I actually bought book two and book four for it, and then I couldn't get hold of two at the time, and now I definitely probably can't, because that's like a year ago or something. Or two years ago. I hope I like it because I own the rest or else I will be sad. I'm ready for some fantasy. I read two contemporary in a row. Let's go. Okay so I had to watch a movie and be social with friends. No I didn't have to but I did. But I did finish Demon King. <laughs> this was an awkward position to be in but I was tired to be in the same place all the time. 
And this one follows two main characters. We have the heir princess of this kingdom, and she is kind of opening her world after living in isolation for a long time. She wants to be more than just like a symbol. She wants to do stuff for her people, and it's a lot of stuff she doesn't know about her people. And then there's a lot of political stuff happening because it is a kingdom, but all the wizards, the people with magic, are controlled by the clans and they are tired of it. So things are moving because of this. And we have another main character, Han, who is just a dude who was part of a gang, but now has like started to clean himself up to be there for his sister and his mother. And then he is like earning money in like more honest ways, etc. And he has these silver cuffs on his arms that he had all his life, but he doesn't know why. You're now balanced on a lot of books. I feel like this is not clever, but now I don't need to stand so awkwardly. Obviously the princess do have, I would say an interaction, etc. And they both live in this world where things are changing, war is brewing, or at least political intrigues brewing. I feel like a lot of the times the story went in directions that you normally see in fantasy and you think a certain thing is gonna happen and it never did. Like it always turned the tables. Like certain characters I thought would definitely die, didn't die. Certain other characters I definitely didn't think would die, died. Which like, it's not even a spoiler, but I was just like, what? Because I felt the book really well managed to turn the tables on things that you're known in fantasy. And it was really well written. I really, really care for the characters. My only complaint is that it was very slow paced. Like it is 500 pages, but it does kind of feel like almost a prequel setting of these characters and this world for you to care about them. And the plot has like barely moved. And I do get that this is serious. It's a four book series. We are going to develop this world and have like a final confrontation as the books go on. And I feel like it's not going to go in a typical way after how this was written because all the typical stuff set up had turns on them. So I feel like it will be worth it. Like the payoff feels worth it in this. And it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always feel like it's worth it, but it this, it definitely does, which makes me very excited for the next books. But it was very slow paced. It definitely feels like the first book in the series is a set of book, but you can still appreciate the set of book for what it is because without the set of book, you won't care for anything that's gonna happen later. And I honestly thoroughly enjoyed it. I had such a good time. I would have finished two hours ago if I didn't watch a movie while trying to read. It didn't go as well because the movie was so entertaining, even though I watched it before, but I wanted to keep up a bit. But yeah, I just finished that. And now I need to read 85 more pages as we established earlier. And I'm giving this a very strong four out of five stars. As I said earlier, there is four books I need to read for the art fantasy bingo. And now completed one of them. So now I have three left. Next one was to read a novella. And if you did hardcore, it wasn't supposed to be published by Tor. And I don't think I have any novellas not published by Tor, I think. So I went with Daniel Green's second book, Rebel's Creed. I have read A Breach of Peace, which is actually a novella. This feels more like not a novella because it's like 262 pages. So I'm going to read 85 of this today. Does it still count as a novella? Because I saw a lot of people add this as a novella. I think it has to do with words more than like pages because like the font here is like very big. I'm counting it. <laughs> so I really hope it counts. Someone arrests me if it doesn't. And I'm going to read this one. I enjoyed the first one. I don't think it was terrible. I didn't think it was amazing. I thought it was fine. It is a while since I read it. So I don't really remember a lot, but they, they, they investigated some murders and I found out stuff about this world through these murders. And then this is obviously the next book in the series. But yeah, the font is huge. I feel like it will be a faster read, but also maybe not because like how to see stuff. I'm gonna read 85 pages of this now tonight and then the rest tomorrow. Yay. Okay. So I read my... Ugh. The book is now underneath another book that is underneath over my phone and everything fell, but it's fine. My 85 pages in Rebel's Creed. It was okay. Like, I think, if I am not remember correctly, we're going now back in time to be one of the characters that were murdered in the first one. And I'm like, we're getting a story of that. If I'm not completely incorrect, honestly, can't remember the first book that well. So right now we are kind of in flashbacks, but we had this like prologue, which is very fascinating. And I want more of that, but we're not getting that right now. We're going into flashbacks. But yeah, it is like, honestly, even though it is many pages, the font is huge. And like, there's so little text on each page. It takes me no time to read. Like, 
it is probably an Olawa since like the text is literally so usually like there's lots of words on the page. So I feel like I cheated by picking this one, but like I can't help that. I mean, nothing is cheating. Reading is reading, obviously all that good stuff. It was just like really weird for me to go to this one. I felt like the other one had so many words. So I feel like it will be a fast read for me to finish the rest of the pages tomorrow which is 277 pages left of this afterwards. So that will probably be the next time you see me. And if you hear that noise, I have a little dog on me. On my little companion. He's being very cute. Why are you looking at me? Look here. Oh, look, look at the camera. Look, look at the camera. I know it doesn't help me talking. Is that her? Oh, look at the little baby. Is that her? Did you say? Did you say? She, she just looking at me. That didn't help at all. But she's very cute. Very cute. She's, she's, look, you can see the top of her head. She's my companion right now. But I'm going to bed very soon. I'm very tired. And I feel like my thought so far for this challenge is that I feel like I should have read more books. Like, I only read five books so far. And we already completed day three. I feel like it should have been more books. But granted, I have been reading long books. Like, you became with 500 pages, so much towards 1,100 pages. This challenge makes me able to actually pick up the long books because you know when you usually do a readathon, you want to read short books, you read as many books as possible because that usually gives you more prompts and points. But for this, it doesn't matter the amount of books, but the amount of pages. So it gives me the freedom to read really thick books because I feel like that is almost easier than like stepping in and out of like, if I read like four books that had 200 pages, I feel like that actually would have to be five. I would have to step in and out of so many like worlds and voices while reading a really, really long one makes you really immersed. And I feel like that makes me read faster right now for this challenge. So it's very interesting to reflect upon like compared to a readathon where like as many books as possible is kind of the goal. And then I usually pick really short things. Now I haven't thought about that at all. It feels really freeing in a way. Either way, just for expressing myself, I thought... I would have read more books at this point. But stuff is happening for the weekend. Just saying that right now. But it's a few days until still. So, yeah. Gigi's being very cute. She's like really close to me. She's being so cute. Okay. Good night. See you tomorrow for the fourth day. And we are so on schedule. And everything is good. So I'm very happy. New day. New opportunities. I woke up feeling so sleepy. And I don't know why. Maybe you can open this curtain. Even daylight outside. So there's that. Okay, so I realized that I had read three books. I read So Much Words, the Lizzie Bennett book, and Demon King, which means I can read a graphic novel or manga, which is what I do in my normal reading. This is to take off the edge of the 1000 pages as well, which obviously makes things a bit easier, blah, 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 blah. But I think all reading counts. So should you. So the next comic on my list is actually Monstrous Volume 8 by Majori Liu and Sam Takeda. Monstrous is a series following this girl here. They live in this world of war. She has been a victim of war for her whole life and then she has this like kind of godly monster inside of her that kind of eats her up as well. Like she loses more and more of her body and then there's different factions in this war where they all like fight each other or try to ally with each other etc. I like it, the art is stunning, the characters are interesting but honestly I don't know who is who anymore after like reading it over a few years like it's so long between each volume and I'm not bothered at all to reread it right now but it's still like fun to follow the story and obviously I do really really enjoy it. This is actually a bit of a thick volume so it's like 208 pages according to Goodreads because it's hard to see pages inside of comic so that's a lot of edged taken off for today which makes me like feel like i'm reading even less books this is a comic it's still a book but yeah but i'm gonna read this now and then i'm gonna read rebel's creed and then i also have some patreon friends read back up so they are starting not yet though what time is it i'm gonna do one hour and 24 minutes i hopefully won't use as long on that and then i will sit over by my computer but right now i can sit here okay i'm gonna read this now two and eight pages let's go okay so I read on Monstrous Volume 8 and I kept falling asleep afterwards because I was just very tired. Not like when I was reading it, but afterwards. But it was really good, actually. 
not like I didn't expect it to, but like actually understood what was happening. Really, really exciting stuff is coming together. Will I forget everything by the time I read the next one? Definitely, but still very, very fun. And since I fell asleep, my hair, I feel like dried in a weird way. Now, Sprint is starting in like 17 minutes. I am gonna continue this. So with Monstrous, I'm gonna put it in my sheets. I have now 208 pages. The last 277 and this would give me 485. So I would need 515 after that again. So obviously I, I already know what I'm reading, but I will let you know when I'm done with this, what is happening. Yay. Okay. After a lot of very talkable, talk, 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 talkable, talkative friends, I finished Robert's Creed. I actually quite enjoyed it. I feel like it's really, really building up to something. I like the world. I feel like there's many more secrets in this world that Daniel will reveal after a while. I feel like the voice is very good. I like, I enjoyed it. I, I, at first I was like, I don't care what this flashback thinks, but then it actually, it kind of mattered a bit and had impact on the story later. So I guess I liked it as well. I felt like this was more solid than the first one that was very, very short, but I do also think that, that the short novella and this could have just been one book, like book number one. Like you didn't need a novella to start off the story for me. I, in the beginning I was like, do I care? But then I ended up kind of caring and now I am excited for the next book to see what more we will see of this world. And yeah, I, I feel like I can't say that much more about plots because it is kind of lots of secrets, but they do investigate these murders and um, they are in this world that is not really that great. Um, as always in those kinds of worlds, maybe revolution is happening or is going to happen. I quite enjoyed it. Honestly, solid book, entertaining. The only like complaint I have is that it is, <laughs> it could have just had smaller fonts and they wouldn't have had as many pages. So I don't know why that was a choice, but it made me be able to finish more pages than I feel like I actually read which I'm not gonna complain that much about. I think if I give it like a solid 3.5, maybe rounding it up to four, maybe giving it a three. I don't remember what I gave the first one, maybe a three as well. But now I feel like that is lower three and this is a bit like higher almost four or like a decent four. I do still have 515 pages I need to read. And the next one I am reading is Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco, which I feel like was such a different vibe than from about Creed. And this one is the third and final book in Kingdom of the Wicked, which follow a main character whose twin sister get murdered. Are they twins? They are these sisters. She get murdered and then she goes out to investigate like why this happened and she comes into contact with the different princess of Hal. And like there's like the main prince she's with, Prince of Wrath. And then stuff happens because of this. I personally didn't love the first one, didn't love the second one. But I'm still going to read the third because that's just who I am. This is 401 pages. So if I add that to my spreadsheet, it will leave me with 114 pages left to read after this. So I still need to start something else after this again. So many books, so little time. Actually, it's only two, so I feel good about this. It's fine. The Daniel Green book did not take me that long, so I, I am good. We'll finish the series. And this is, again, for our fantasy. I think it was one where it was like, read a book with agents and demons or something as main characters. And I would say that the princes of hell are demons, <laughs> depending on how you want to define demons, but I'm just counting it, someone sue me or something. So I'm gonna read this now. I'm not that excited, but I am kind of excited to just like not have it on my TBR anymore and not think about it. Also, I didn't know it was so pretty underneath the dust jacket, but yeah, I'm not gonna have that on when I read it. I will let you know how I feel soon. Okay, so I just finished out. <laughs> Kingdom of the Feared. I always forget which kingdom we are on. And honestly, I think I like this more than the others because it got very, very sexy. And I feel like it always was better as a kind of fantasy romance than a like mystery kind of thing. It focused heavily on the romance here with like small like mystery parts. And honestly, the mystery parts were incredibly boring still. Even after like three books, I was just like, I don't care. Let's just bang. And they did. But like, I don't think overall I like the series. I feel like a part of me shouldn't hold them just because like they're taking a lot of space. But the UK hardbacks out of print and those are the ones I have. And I'm like, oh, but I should keep them because of that. I'm like, no, Sandra, please. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like I like this more. I'm giving it 2.5 out of 5. Maybe like I could round it up to 3. 
but not like in a series that was all for me. I don't think the author is for me because I do think like Stalking Jack the Ripper is similar to these and I just like, I don't care, I think. I, I'm not saying the series was horrible. I feel like it definitely had entertaining parts and like parts of it that was interesting. I just felt like the love interest was like, I want to be Raisan and I felt like the plot was not interesting at all. Like at all for me. It was, they were just totally fine. Overall, like... I will probably forget it in a few years. But I completed the series and I now have 140 pages left I need to read. Which means I can now start my last book for Art Fantasy, which is like the one to complete the whole board. And I am starting it obviously now because I need to read those 140 pages today. I'm starting A Shade of Madness by Tiago Abdallah. This is the sequel to A Touch of Light, which is an indie fantasy series. I read the first one for Spiffable last year. And I don't really know how to describe it. They live in this world where the royal family is kind of immortal and they're known to be. Like, people know they are immortal. And then, I don't remember. <laughs> there's, like, creatures that's going around. There's kind of monsters. And there's more stuff going on. I feel like, I hopefully, it will come back to me when I start now the second book. Because I don't bother rereading the first one. But this I'm reading for Magical Creatures prompt. Which... There's griffins in the book, so I'm using it for that. And I did one like the first one a lot, so I am started to read the sequel. And it's like 515 pages long, so it's a quite a long book once again. So I need to read like most of it, of course, tomorrow. We're gonna read 140 pages now today. Then I have, I think, 401 left for tomorrow, which is kind of ironic since this was exactly 401 pages. So like the numbers keep appearing again. That was Discord. Now I am going to start that, and that will be my last page for today. Yay, I'm also very hungry, but I think I will power through these 100 pages before eating something. I just want to quickly say that I did finish my 140 pages in A Shade of Majest Majest Madness. And my my head is just so tired. I feel like I feel haven't tired all day, but I feel like I've been extra tired the last few days after reading those 1,000 pages. I've been gaming, but now we're going to watch a movie again. Because I had so much time today. Probably because I read that comic. But yeah, so I made it to 1,000 pages. I'm very happy. And now I'm going to go and watch that movie. And then I will see you tomorrow for another 1,000 pages. But yeah, I feel like I had really good time today. Maybe because I read easier stuff. Love to see it. Now I feel like I want to read as much all the time. But that is insane. So I'm not going to do that. But I am going to go and watch that movie. So see you tomorrow. Okay, I have finally finished A Shade of Madness. I saying finally, I guess it's like almost 6 p.m. And I started to read very late today. I've had to film some videos and edit a bit and stuff. I am on Spurs with Cecilia. We're having a very good time, but I have also feel like procrastinated. And I feel like obviously I'm having a good time and it's fun to read, but I feel like I wanted to lie down and sleep for 14 days. A Shade of Madness was fun. It is also, I think I forgot to say when I was doing the synopsis, that is also about like this virus that is hunting the land that makes people go mad and die and then we have like different point of views like a prince a griffin rider and a person with like abilities to sense emotions that like are in the middle of like i was gonna say not just the kingdom but several kingdoms too i was gonna say survive in this world and have different roles to play in this world and i did enjoy it i do think like my brain was drifting a lot when reading it. So I had to like reread a lot of passages. And I do think that I don't know if it's to do with the writing style or if it's just me not concentrating. But I feel like I concentrated really, really great on all the others. So I feel like maybe it's to do with the writing style that's match as well with me as I would love to. It doesn't mean that the book is bad. It's just that I don't, maybe my brain doesn't love it, but I'm still enjoying it. I'm still really, really, really liking the world. There was stuff in the end there that was like, Oh, I'm very curious to see where we go. I really liked how the end connected a lot to the first book in a way. I don't want to say more, obviously. I do think it's a very solid fantasy series. It's one that maybe I could even reread on audio because I know it has audiobook as well. Because I feel like I noticed lately that some books maybe just need to be told to me for me to grasp it like fully, even though I had a really, really great time. And I think I would give it like a strong three, maybe three from five. I don't know if it's four but yeah a solid fantasy that i would recommend like honestly i think it's a very strong book and i had a good time so i actually also realized that i 
calculated wrong. I said I read three books and then I could read Monstrous. But actually I read A Storm of Swords, Lock and Castle, Hundred Lies and Demon King and then I read Monstrous. So that's four books. So then I need to like count in one and the next count kind of. Because now I also read Rebels Creed, Kingdom of the Fear and then A Shade of Madness. And then in theory Demon King has not been counted because I, I messed up math. But I either way need to read a comic now because I've read three books in theory four so that fourth will now be counted in for the next like two and then I can read a comic in again in a way that's how I do the math I now have read 401 pages we have a lot left we have 599 pages left today and it's already 6 p.m I am appalled <laughs> but I my next comic slash manga it's, it's obviously a comic like is either a comic or a manga that comes off three books. It's Phantom Volume 6. This is just 112 pages, which is not a lot, but at least it gives me a little boost to have less than 500 pages left after that again. I think we're gonna go over 1000 today because of stuff that happens tomorrow. I'm doing a readathon tomorrow, which I will talk about obviously when it's happening, which means I will probably go over today because I need to finish stuff today because I can't read it for the readathon because it doesn't fit for the readathon. And on Monday is a new month, so I kind of need to do it now. But I'm gonna at least read this. Fans is a very gay comic. This is William Six, as I said, that they do fencing and they are basically all in love with each other and then we fence, and it's really great. So I'm gonna go and read this now, which is not gonna take me at least that long. So see you soon. Oh! Okay, I have now finished Fans, which was adorable and 112 pages, as I said earlier. Like, it was so much fun. Stuff that happened here, and I'm like, I actually almost want to reread the novels because honestly the first one of those was one of the best things I ever read. It's so cute. It's just so adorable and just fun. Like sometimes you just want to read fun. So yeah, adorable. Very much recommend if you have not and just want the cutest, queerest thing in the world. And now I'm starting my next read. I told the sprint like three times what I'm going to read next and I really haven't told you at all. But I am reading A Fate Inked in Blood, not by Blood. Oops. I need to change my name in the stream by Danielle L. Jensen. This is the author of Witch Kingdom, which is like a drama series I really enjoy. I hope this is on pair of that or else I will be so disappointed, but it's one of my most anticipated this year. And I really, really want to read it. So I pushed it ahead a lot now. Like I wanted to really read it for this challenge, even though like obviously I have a billion things I probably should read instead, but I want to read this now. So I am going to read this now. And this is, I need to check my spreadsheets. 410 pages so after this I still have 77 pages left which I am gonna go over because of reasons I will explain but I'm gonna just start with reading this it is already like 6 30 I have a panic inside but it's fine so I'm gonna go and do that and um, yeah I know it's magic a romance and to do with vikings I'm excited and I feel like Danielle and Johnson is the one who can like do the world building and the politics and also have a good romance at the same time so I'm hoping that it delivers in this one too. Please. It has literally been like a hundred years, I feel like. I finally finished a fate inked. Is it in blood? Yes, in blood. Not by blood. But Danielle and Jansen. It is like a Viking thingy where we have a main character who finds out she has powers. And then she needs to join up with this dude that is basically using her for power for this future that was seen for him. And then she kind of starts following his son instead. It is kind of, I would say, a fantasy romance. And it has to do with Vikings and Northern mythology. And I realized that I just kind of don't care for Viking stories. I think it's more to do with setting than anything else. Because I feel like the world in Viking stories are basically the same. And it bores me. Saying, as a person who comes from Norway, I think it would be interesting to read more like maybe retellings of the actual Northern myths. A bit like we get retellings of Greek mythology, you know, than just reading about people who are Vikings that believe in the gods, in a way. That's just me, at least. So the setting bored me a bit, and then the plot twist were a bit fun in the end, but it was kind of also very predictable. And I just felt that main character was just a bit stupid. Like, she was not a really smart person. She kept saying she was going to do this thing, and I'm like, I don't know, it was a bit annoying. Obviously, the romance was a bit fun. Like, it, it is a smutty book. I did like their build up, but I just like felt like the characters weren't as compelling, for example, like in Bridge Kingdom. So I didn't care as much for them. And then I ended up just being a bit bored of a lot of parts of the book. I felt like the plot, I guess, made sense, yes, but it wasn't like, I don't know how to describe it, but I was just a bit bored. And I just felt like parts of it, when I think about it, like 
for me didn't make as much sense. And it falls into a lot of like tropes, but while in Bridge King I felt like that were done better. I felt like this it wasn't done as well. So it made me be a bit bored. So I, I think I would give it like a three. Honestly, a bit disappointing. But I feel fine for it. It was good. I would read it next. But like personally, I thought I would love it more. So yeah. So now I did actually think that I had to read all of my next read. Or show you. Because I have, wait, I have 77 pages left. But my next read was, I'm going to show you, Network Effect by Marta Wells. This is because I'm doing more about read along on my Patreon. And we are on book five in Murderbots and I like to do read it within the month and also it's on my TBR so else if I don't read it now I will film a TBR and tomorrow Saturday and Sunday is a Patreon readathon on my Patreon that Patreon readathon maybe I can sit you down here is based on the theme of the number three so everything to do with a number three you can count like last book in a trilogy the third book by an author the third book you read by the author a book number three in a series, William Tree of a manga, anything to do with number three. Obviously, if it's three in the title, if it is three words in the title, like stuff like that. Author has three names. Anything to do with a number three works really real fun. And I didn't come up with this idea myself, by the way. It was Sarah's idea. So thank you, Sarah. And obviously, I would usually do a separate readathon vlog. But since I'm doing this challenge this week, it ended up in this vlog because I'm not going to do two separate vlogs at the same time and this was the only week I can do this challenge and then this readathon had been planned for like over a month so it ended off like this but it's fine because it works so I'm going to read in this weekend Saturday and Sunday which is tomorrow and the next day much more than 1000 pages because that's what I usually do for readathons so it's going to be more than 7000 pages in this video but it's still obviously it's fine that I read more, not less. But my point was that I read it from start tomorrow. And then I thought I couldn't read this. So I thought I had to read this whole thing today. But since I read A Faith Ink but in Blood, obviously this is more than 77 pages. And usually the murder book books are really short. They are around like 170 pages. So like I wouldn't mind reading like 100 pages more because they are fast reads. This, however, is the novel in the series. It's a bit thicker than the others. And the font is like, it's much more text. Like usually has so little text on it. So I feel like it's going to take me longer. And I thought that I now actually need to sit here and read 350 pages. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't want to because it's already 1am and I want to go to bed. But I realized this is 350 pages. I can read it for tomorrow for the readathon because it's three. I have to do a page count and it's three in the page so I can count it for tomorrow. So I'm going to read my 77 pages now and read the rest tomorrow. Obviously, you normally wouldn't read a book for a readathon that I already started. But since I'm all doing this challenge and since I'm going to read lots tomorrow because of reasons, I am doing an exception for stuff. And it's my readathon. I can do what I want. And it's my challenge. I can do what I want. I also like kind of failed with this manga series I bought for the readathon. But I think when I'm going to read it tomorrow, I will explain to you what's going on as I pick the books for the readathon. So everything I read from now on until the end of this video would have to do with a number three in some way for me. So yeah, I'm going to read the 77 pages of this murder book, book and then I can go to bed and then... I need to start over again tomorrow. <laughs> I am slowly losing it because I have so much stuff to do and this challenge has taken a lot of time. I am having a great time. I have read so many books. I'm very happy about that. But I am stressed about the things I need to do. Like outside YouTube. And I'm not necessarily outside YouTube, but the things I need to edit and the stuff I need to do in life. I just don't want to think about it. But I am thinking about it constantly. So it stresses me out. But I'm trying to forget about it and just read and enjoy. Either way, I'm very hot. I should open my window. I will read my pages. Don't know if I updated you before bed. Maybe a quick update and you will see you tomorrow. If not. Okay, I did finish my 77 pages. It didn't take that long. It's like soon 2 a.m. But that was not because I used that long to read. I started to try to plan of what I'm supposed to read for like the readathon, which starts tomorrow. Like I had a plan and my plan feels not good anymore. So I'm going to decide on that tomorrow. I look like a mess. Well, I'm going to go to bed. So see you tomorrow for readathon and for me reading a thousand pages anyway. Let's go. How was I going to talk? I realized maybe I haven't talked a lot. No, that's a lie. I definitely have. I haven't talked in some hours. It's the next day. I am starting sprints not until like one hour and 24 minutes because I want a time to eat and 
edit my TBR because I really needed to do that today because it's going up tomorrow. But now I obviously have some time and I should start reading so that I don't need to sit up until 2 a.m. and stuff. And I like, I need to read so much. I have so much to read for this readathon. I'm a bit stressed. So starting off, I wanted to always to continue network effect and I'm going to read that I think either later today or just tomorrow as my last read because obviously it's not going to take me that long but I'm still obviously going to read it before this vlog ends. But my main thing that I want to read for the readathon because it is number three I had picked out Dustlands. Oh that was really bad. Dustlands trilogy by Mora Young. This is an older YA dystopia trilogy and this is going to be the first on my agenda today because it is like the main thing I want to read for this and I want to read that first so that I know I will actually get to it. So it is obviously counts for the readathon because it is a trilogy and I'm going to read it in its entirety and I have actually read number one two times. I read it the first time I can actually check this because I have it right here. I also have something in my eye in the second, which was very annoying. This is very confusing. The first time I read it was in 2011. <laughs> that is a long time ago. I read it in Norwegian. I think I borrowed it at the library and I absolutely loved it. And then I always wanted to continue <laughs> and then I never did. <laughs> Not like on purpose, it's just like it was a series I started and you know, like it was a time where I saw just a lot of things. And then it went a few years and then I, the old covers even went out of print and I got these new covers here, which I do enjoy more anyway. And then I finally like bought this whole series. I think I wish it for like birthday Christmas-ish, like in the same year. I got them all at the same time. And I was like, yes, I'm gonna read it. I reread this. It was in 2018. So already like seven years after the first time I read it. And now, I mean, 2018 is now six years ago. So it's always been seven years again. Wait, what? I thought I just got these. But apparently it was in 2018. I'm having a moment. That's so long time ago. I also feel like 2018 was like last year, but that's just me. I was intending to read the whole series that year and it never happened. And now I just feel like I need to just reread number one one more time. So I am going to do that. I, even though like I kind of remember it, I want to get into the vibe and like, just like reread the first one. It's a very, very easy read. The way it's written is very like kind of rough, but I kind of like it. And it just basically follows the pair of twins and then the brother gets kidnapped in the first one and then the sister's going out to find him. They also have a younger sister and they just live a rough life surviving in this world. And it gives a bit like Black Wings beating maybe vibes, a bit in the way it's written, I feel like, but it's very different worlds. So I'm excited to actually see how the whole thing will go. However, I know I heard actually terrible things about like the final and people were like not happy about it. But obviously I still want to read it. And I like I gave this five stars both times I read it in 2018 as well. So I feel like I just really, really love this one. And I just need to complete the series. And then I was perfect opportunity to do so now. They're not that long, you know, and it's YA and the font is huge. So I feel like it will be fine. And then I have other things I obviously want to read for the readathon as well. But I will get back to you on how that goes. This is, I forgot to say, the page count. Which is why we are here. This is 417 pages. And then we shall see what I end up with today. The light. I don't know. It's like the sun blinded me. I needed to take down a curtain. And now I look so funny. I finished Blood Red Road. I really enjoyed it. I feel like it's written in kind of accent. Like I would say sound to an accent. But don't keep me. <laughs> don't keep me like accountable for that. And I normally hate things written in accent, but this works for me. This is the only book that works for me for this. And it doesn't even have quotation marks in the dialogues. And it's just something about the style it's written in. I just really like it. It feels like rough and like, just, it really makes the atmosphere for the story. We have a main character, Saba, who like needs to go out after her brother. And I feel like in the beginning, she's kind of brat and kind of bitchy. And she's still like, obviously you can be fierce without being bitchy, but she has a lot of development. And obviously, for the journey for her brother, she realizes she's so much more than she ever thought would be. She's always been in his shadow. And I really like to see like the development of her story. She actually had a moment with these girls and I'm like, can't she just be together with them? <laughs> I feel like if it's written in these days, it might have been gay, which would have been great. But also I kind of even like the romance because obviously it is a white dystopian from its time and it needs to be a romance. And I even kind of like the dude, even though in the beginning I was like, I don't like him at all, but then I forgot that he always grows on me. And I just really like her relationship with her sister and how she realizes she's being kind of a bitch and just develops. There is birds really like 
really loud last time I went on. The window was open, so I'm sorry if you can hear that really loudly. But it's just like a wasteland thing. And now that I reread this now for the third time, I'm really curious to see where the rest of the story will go. Because like, it's very open and I just wonder what the author did for the rest of the story. So I guess I'm just gonna start that now. So the next book is... Can I still write this five? <laughs> I feel like maybe it's more of a four now after being so long because like maybe it's not evolved as much as I like to, but I just really like the atmosphere. Oh God, the light just changed rapidly. I think a cloud came in front of the sun. So I feel like it's very like of its time, but like different. So I like it. I might just give it 4.5. Might round it up to five. But yeah, that was 470 pages. The next book in the series is... Rebel Hearts. This is 393. So together I already read 810, so I only have 190 after that. But as I said, I have plans for this readathon, so I'm gonna read much more than that. But I guess I will just start this, and I'll let you know, actually like reading continuing the series is a bit weird, since like now I just read the first book three times. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, just really like the character development and the world and how it's written. Yay, let's go. And here I am a little while later, and I finished Rebel Hearts. It was a fine book. I think I liked the first one more, but like I still enjoyed it. I was the first being like, nothing much is happening. And I just feel like there was no direction with the plot. But then I was thinking about the first book and it didn't really have like a huge plot in there either. And I felt like the author built on the characters here a lot and gave them a new conflict while at the same time making it more complex. Writing and the atmosphere, I still really enjoyed it. I was just trying to be like, but things are happening. It's very much the same book. And that's why we like the same book. Because of how it was built up. So I feel like you can't like expect like a Hunger Games revolution in this. But you need to just roll with vibe. And when I thought more about that, I did um, love liking it more. There's like literally a kindergarten happening upstairs right now. So it is a bit noisy. But like I still enjoy that. I am excited to see where the last book will go. They get shorter and shorter. That makes me a bit nervous. But... Alas, a enjoyable read. And now I'm like, I'm excited for myself that I have read the second one. And like, it kind of, I was going to say, did go where I thought it would go, but at the same time not. But now I just don't know how all this will go. So we shall see in the third book, which is here. Which is dark. People hate this. <laughs> I've seen people really hate this. So I am curious to see what will happen. I just, I am very confused of some of the things happening in the other one. But like, not necessarily in bad way. Wait, why is the font so much smaller? Like for real? Like, there's so much more text in this one. I'm not even joking. I feel like the font is so much smaller. So maybe that's why it's shorter, but it's actually as many words. Because it is only like 344. I, yes, I did peek the last page, but I, I didn't read anything. So it's like 40 pages shorter. Is that math? Literally insane stuff happening upstairs. I'm giving Rebel Heart 4. And I'm, when I read, I will be at... Wait, 344. I'll actually be at 1,154 pages. So I'm already over 1,000 for today. And I'm going to read more. Like, actually much more. But there is like a lot of manga coming up, so like... Maybe that will make you forgive me for that, because I don't know. Obviously everything counts, but it feels obviously much easier if I just... I could have read manga all week, you know what I mean. So now we will be at 1154 pages, and I will keep you always updated for how much more I will read. But yeah, I'm gonna go and read the last one in the series and complete it. Okay, so I did finish Raging Star, which was like... Okay, I can see why a lot of people don't like the ending. Because honestly, there were some choices in here that I was like really shocked by because that just felt a lot of the things we were fighting for became a bit meaningless and it's like it kind of doesn't end anywhere but it was still enjoyable still like the writing style etc even though I felt like we lost the like really special voice after a while I felt like it wasn't as prominent in the last book as it was in the first book first book definitely the best one but it's like okay read I think I ended up giving the last one a three star so now is the problem that I've been talking about maybe before, where I bought all of Fire Punch, which is by Tsuki Fujimoto, to read for this readathon because it is the third series of manga that I read with the author like in its own thing. But then I accidentally read look back before this, forgetting I was supposed to read this for this readathon. 
So this will now be my fourth by the author, which is also fit for the readathon. But I think it's still, I'm still, I'm stretching it a bit, but I'm still gonna like read it. I want to still read the whole series for this readathon, which obviously will pay, take my page count up to a billion, but it is a manga, so it's fine. But I'm gonna read them by three, I think. So I'm gonna read three volumes now. So one, two, three, to like make it surrounded around three and then add upon maybe a Chainsaw Man volume in the end. But honestly, my brain is fried because then I realized if I do this, I need to read three and then I need to read another three books, then three Fire Punch, then another three books, and then the last two Fire Punch plus Chainsaw Man. And I just feel like that's not gonna happen because I spent all day reading this trilogy alone. And I feel like I have in me three or four more books and then Fire Punch, not six more books. Oh, that was my alarm in case I didn't make it back before the sprint ended. So like, I feel like what I want is not gonna happen. I'm still gonna reach my page goal for this week, which is the whole point of this vlog. But my ambitions for the readathon became a bit severe after wanting to read things by tree by tree, but it's not gonna happen because I just realized that that is unrealistic for two days. <laughs> but yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is read the first three volumes of Fire Punch. I was gonna check how many pages each volume are because obviously I do count the pages, even though it is a manga. So they seem to all be around 200. First one is 200, second and, and third is 208 plus 208. So that is what, 616? on those three alone. Now again, it is manga, but I have already reached over 1000 with the other books, but we are counting everything. For those who don't, that's too bad for you. Obviously, if we count for this day, I obviously need to still read a thousand pages tomorrow, but I still believe fully that that will happen. But yeah, I'm gonna read these three now. I'm not gonna talk about each original volume, but like as a tree, I will get back to you after that. I cannot even almost say the sentence right now. I feel like my brain has fried and become like fried. <laughs> I felt like I shattered into pieces today. Like there was a point where like my brain was not like reading anything. I don't know if it's because I didn't sleep well or I don't even know if I slept well or not. Or it's just because I've been reading so much that my brain is actually fried. But I did complete the three volumes of Fire Punch. That is a world where everything is ice and people are starving because there's no food, there's no heat. And we have my main character that, well, <laughs> there's cannibalism. There's like almost incest, but not actually incest. There's lots of attempted rapes, attempted sexual assaults. So like if those stuff obviously is not for you, then you shouldn't read it. And I'm not saying that, I don't know if it's amazing, but it's like, I still think it's a fascinating story in a way that it's told, because it's kind of a superhero story, but also a supervillain story. Because like it's set in a world where people have powers. And my character is like regenerative powers. And since people were starving, he cut off his limbs so people could eat to save people. But then also more stuff like that happens. That's just the beginning of how they kind of have been for a while. But like, that's not the main part of the story. But there's more parts later that like references to this. So it's like a brutal, terrible, dystopian world with people with powers that use them for good or bad, in a way. And it is interesting, like definitely, that you give for Jamal to have a really interesting way of telling stories. And it's a huge fan of film, as you can clearly tell through this, film has a huge part of the story as well. And the characters are always like, very unhinged and out of the box and <laughs> not there. <laughs> and I think that they're really interesting, but sometimes they can also feel similar because I can definitely see a lot of similarities in some of the characters here, as well in Chance's Man and Look Back and Goodbye Array. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's just like if you know the author's work, you can see not necessarily the same character being used, but similarities in a way. But it, it is really interesting. I'm really liking it so far, but I can definitely see people reading it and, and not be to their taste, which is totally valid. But for me, I enjoy the awareness of Fujimoto. That's why I like to read them. And yes, it has brutality and stuff in it that obviously I don't think is actually okay in real life. But to read it is fascinating. And it's developing not the way I thought it would develop at all. Because it definitely has a lot of like tropes that you see in these kinds of stories with people with powers, etc. But I still think it's being played well. 
So again, I'm curious to see what would develop. I read the first three volumes and I have five left. And as it is a shorter manga, I feel like every punch is being punched hard right now because I know I don't have that much time to console with everything. That's what I think so far. I will give more thoughts tomorrow. Tomorrow I am starting out with three more Fire Punch. I was, as I said, going to read three books and then three more Fire Punch and then three more books, but I don't have it in me to read six books tomorrow plus six volumes of manga. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> I admit defeat in that regard, but I still complete my readathon. I still complete this challenge. I shouldn't stress about it. I just feel like a failure, even though I know I shouldn't because all oh, well, this whole week has been obviously a huge achievement in general, but that was what I wanted to do and I realized that that was not achievable anymore, so I changed my plans. So I'm gonna finish Network Effect and two more books that I'm not completely decided on yet. We shall see tomorrow. That's that's what I got. But I'm starting with Fire Punch, so volume four, five, and six. So I actually get through it because I bought it for this readathon and I want to really, really badly read it for this readathon or else all the struggle I had to actually get them in time would have been for nothing. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that and actually like read it for the readathon and enjoy it because I am having a really good time with it and it made me feel better when I read it. So while maybe some people would say it didn't count, it counts, obviously. And I'm going to read those three volumes, then three books, then three more volumes of manga and end it there for tomorrow, for the last day. And I'm going to go to bed. I am destroyed. My eyes hurt. My brain hurts. I need sleep more than I need anything else in my life. So good night and see you for the last day tomorrow. Hello! Welcome to the last day of this challenge last list vlog and I just finished volume 6 of Fire Punch. I forgot to take up my spreadsheet but I think every volume is like 208 pages. So I have now read volume 4, 5, 6. Oh god. I pressed the wrong spreadsheet. Let me in! <laughs> I am a spreadsheet for patrons for the last day of our readathon as well. And I have read 624 pages, if you want to be cool and count all those, or, as we do, obviously. I am already over 7,000 pages. I am at 7,394. In theory, have read as if it was 1,000 every day, but I am still going to read 1,000 today, plus, plus, plus. But yeah, the story had a really big turn in this. Because, like, we have, like, a certain kind of story, but now the whole narrative changed since, like, in 5 and 6, the whole narrative changed. And I'm sitting here, like, what is going on? I like it, but I'm like, what is going on? Because I didn't expect such a huge shift. I thought we were following a certain thing, and we are not at all. And I'm like, interesting, but don't understand. <laughs> but obviously... I am going to roll with it. I guess I'll just continue to read. So now I'm going to finish Network Effects. And as we know, on Friday, I've read 77 pages in that because I had to complete my pages for that day. It is 349 pages. So it will be 272 pages I need to read today, which will bring my page count up to 896. And I have 104 pages left after that. So yeah, I'm gonna finish that for a fact now. So see you in a couple of hours. Yay. Okay, so I have now finished Network Effect. It took a bit longer because we have family visiting and I'm like, leave me alone, I'm working. <laughs> but it was 350 pages, not 349 as I have written up. So I actually read down 273 pages and I have in theory 103 left. But I am, I have a last decided in the end what to do with my two next books and then the three last mangas because I think... I think I am. I'm going to start Prince of Fools for Mark Lawrence, which seems maybe very random, but I put number two, the last key on my April TBR. I don't want to deal with reading this in April because it's like 500 pages and I already have like lots of other thick books I need to read in April. So it would be one last book to think about then. It is 5 p.m. I will definitely finish this in time. And then I read the shortest book in the world after that. Done three more mangas and then I'm done. I feel like I always read Mark Lawrence fast, but that's maybe because I'm not that interested in what he writes. I'm sorry. The Red Crest War series, it is in the same world as Prince of Thorns. And it fits for the readathon because it is the third series I start for Mark Lawrence. Not the third book, but the third series I start for him. I have to double check if it actually was the third series, but it is. It is also has three words in the title, so it still fits. It is actually also 502 pages, not 503, then it would have fit in that regard as well. But yeah, I guess I just need to start reading now. So I actually finished this some reasonable time today. And I'm gonna let you know how it goes. Wait, when I have read this, I will have read. I will actually have read 1,399 today, which obviously completes, well, everything. 
and I would be over a thousand pages for this week and it's still not everything I'm going to read because I'm still going to finish Fire Punch, etc. So, see you soon. Yay. And also, I didn't really have much thoughts on that for a fact. I feel like the books are confusing, but they're still really good. It was an interesting installment in the series. I'm excited to talk to it with my patrons. And that is my great review I have effort to do right now. <laughs> See you soon. I finished Prince of Fools. I actually went much more faster than, like, I thought it would. Because in Kindle, it said it was at 347 pages. But my physical edition is still 502. That's not my fault. The font they use in this is apparently just maybe huge. That's why it's so many pages. And, you know, I just talked a lot with you guys about how I don't really love Viking stories. Do you know what showed up in this book? It might have been Vikings. And I was like, great. So he still had like Odin and Thor and all that stuff. And I was like, I don't care. But honestly, it wasn't even that much focus on the Viking part. We follow a grandson of like the queen. I'm looking at like the synopsis to see what I can say. He's just chilling, basically. And then he get bonded or like um, at least like evolved with that sound like they're a romantic relationship they're not with this viking dude called snorri and the name of the dude that the main character in a fate of blood had married was named snorri so i was like eh, please anyway and then i have are on the way north to save snorri's family and then they'll meet stuff on the way that stops them this i think happens simultaneously as prince of thorns get to do like mansion Yorg, the main character in Prince of Thorns. And I do remember now that, like, when that happened, that someone told me that that happened at the same time. And I was like, oh, I had forgotten that. But I don't know what to say. For me, it was just, like, it's a journey. They fought some stuff. They met some people. They came there. And then the book ended. Like, it didn't really give anything. I kind of didn't care about the characters. I didn't even care about the world. I don't even think that the things that happened were even that exciting. Or, like, that anything was revealed that was exciting. I felt like it was a very straightforward book. I'm not saying it is bad, but I'm just saying it wasn't amazing either. There was nothing about it that really captured me. It just feels like I'm feeling totally neutral about the whole thing. I don't know even what to rate it. I feel like I would could rate it three. I could lower it to two because it was literally only just okay. I wouldn't even say that my enjoyment was low. There was just no enjoyment. <laughs> so it just felt very neutral to the whole book. And I'm just like, okay, I read it now. Great, I guess I can read the next book. But we are going to read the next book. And I want a really, really short book for the final book book I'm going to read. And then I'm going to read three mangas. So I chose out A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. So we went from Viking fantasy thing to smut. This is... I'm going to check. Uh, 253 pages. I'm going to just add it here and see how much we get to done. Then we are at 1,652 for today. Um, which is a lot. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's almost as much as yesterday. And we still haven't read the other three manga we need to read. I'm feeling like clearer in my head than I was all yesterday. Yesterday, I think I lost it. And I don't really know why, but I did. I'm going to read this. So if you don't know, this is the third book in the Wicked Villains, which is obviously why it fits for this readathon, because it's the third book. And it is... Like, every book is a retelling of a Disney thing where they end up with a villain, and it's very smutty. So the first one was with Jasmine and Jafar. second one was with Meg and Hades and Hercules. <laughs> and this one is Hook and Wendy, I believe. And they are just, like, fun, chill. It's basically just also smut, and it's just like... Mm. It's fun. So that was a jump in books. But I really just was trying to find very, very short books on my TBR. That was the third book in the series. And I remember I had that. And I was like, well, it's very short. And it's kind of like the easy breeziest read in the world. So that's why I'm always picking out because I am very tired. But yeah, I'm going to go and start it now. Actually, I need to eat dinner in like 10 minutes. But I will start and read a few pages. And I will let you know when I'm done. Yay! Okay. I just finished a wordy opponent, opponent, a, a, a poem. Oh my god, I just dropped a book on the floor. The poem, I feel like I have opponent, and I feel like I have here in my eye, They're like literally fell down in my eye right now. It was fine. It's mostly smart. It's tried to do a plot, and I just like the thing that puts me off about it in the most is always like they don't want each other, or like not always, but like they don't want each other, and then they make the love each other after like one day, and then they end up together. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I get it. Like, it's a short novella book, but it's always like every time that makes me like not want to believe in it as much. But I think the second one so far is my favorite, actually. This one, I was like, eh. just because obviously it's entertaining. The, like, the sex scenes are what makes the book entertaining, obviously. But like the low part, I'm like, that was very, very, very fast. But that means we're done with our last book book. And we are going to read the last mangas that I need to read. So we're going to read Fire Punch, Volume 7. Fire Punch, Volume 8. And Chainsaw Man, Volume 8. To make it a tree, not a tree song, but like tree book. So that I like feel on theme for my readathon. I haven't checked the page count for all of these. But assume it's going to be like 208 for both Fire Punch and like 200 for Chainsaw Man. So I will let you know the final page count in the next clip, which I assume is then going to be the last one for this very long vlog and very complicated vlog. And oh my god, usually I would end my readathon, I feel like, here because like I read a lot for it. But since I bought Fire Punch to read for this readathon, I cannot end it without completing the series. And then change some man to feel like I'm reading tree by trees as I wanted to. Remember, I wanted to read three more books books. Oh my god. It's already like soon 11. Not yet though. In one hour and 20 minutes. So like that's in theory how long I have left. But I feel like I will be good finishing these before then. Yay! Okay. So I finished the last three mangas. I... Pust, pust, multiplied. Oh my god. Added? I don't know um, math words in English. I only know them in Norwegian, okay? Altogether, I think I am on 9,030 pages and we are ending this tomorrow where I will show you the stack of books and like talk quickly. I was just thoughts, but I did it. I actually went 2,000 pages over, obviously because I read those mangas, but still, and because it was a readathon. Saturday was the hardest day and Friday. But here we are, and I'm happy, and I did it. And the last two mangas I read, volume eight of both Fire Punch and Chase a Man, some of the most bizarre shit I ever read. But I feel so revealed and happy, relieved, relieved, really, I can't even speak anymore. I'm gonna actually not go to bed right now and game a bit, and then you see me tomorrow for the last of this vlog. Oh my god! Oh my god. I just spent like six hours editing this video. And I just talked so much and I like, I don't know what to cut. So you just had to watch me talk a lot. It was an experience. The week, I felt like now I'm a bit more clear handed because I haven't read a single page today. And the week just went, like the first four days was fine. Friday and Saturday was so hard. And then Sunday obviously felt better. And then it didn't help on the top of that that I did a readathon as well. And obviously I had a great time. Like, oh my god, I've read so many books. I ended up on 26 books, if I am counting it correctly. I can actually double check this. I can't even hold the pile up. Who reads this much in a, in a week? Who? Me. Why? Why did I do this? And even so, I even had two more books that like I don't have physically. Oh my god, what a week. What a time. I just want to say quickly goodbye because this video is already like a f future movie in the cinemas. I want to say thank you so much if you bothered to watch through this whole thing. It was really, really fun. It was very, very entertaining for me to do this kind of challenge. Will I ever do it again? I'm saying no now. I told Erica if I ever want to do this again, tell me no. But then I will probably want to because now I don't it once I can do it twice. But it was a great fun, a great way to celebrate a thousand videos. Thank you so much for sticking around. You shall see me soon in a new video. Something is falling right now. Oh my god, is this? It's a manga that I didn't even read for this. It just snuck in here. I just filmed a wrap over earlier, so that's why. You shall see me soon. And have a great rest of read out, which I also decided to do yesterday. And I added it so far one video. Wish me good luck. See me very soon and leave a shocked face and want to down below if you enjoyed this. And you should see me soon.